Hello and welcome to the first video of the M2 chapter Work and Energy. Quick M1 question on the screen to get us going. A 5 kilogram box rests on a rough plane. Remember the word rough means that there is friction. Inclined at an angle of 20 degrees to the horizontal. If the box is on the point of sliding down the plane, find the coefficient of friction between the box and the plane. So we know that the coefficient of friction connects the normal here, R, with the amount of friction being produced, which I'll call F subscript R. And if it is on the point of sliding down the plane, it is this equation. Otherwise, this would be an inequality. So if the motion is down the plane, then the friction is attempting to stop the motion, so it is acting up the plane, and the thing that is acting down the plane to pull it down is the component of the weight. The weight acting vertically downwards is 5 times g, 9.8, resolved into its two component parts here, 5g cosine 20, and down the plane, 5g sine 20. So we know that the normal, R, is equal to that, resolving perpendicular to the plane, which means our friction is equal to mu times that, and resolving parallel to the plane, we can see that the friction is equal to the component of the weight down the plane, because the box is not yet moving, it's just on the point of sliding down the plane. And if it's not moving, that means in our F equals MA equation, the acceleration is zero. So the right hand side is zero. And F here, this is why I had a subscript R for friction, because the F here is the overall force, the resultant force, which is 5G sine 20 minus the friction. Therefore, the friction must equal 5G sine 20. They are balanced because this is not moving. It's in equilibrium. Now we know that the friction is equal to this, and the friction must also be equal to this. We can put this equal to this. So we have 5g sine 20 is equal to mu times 5g cos 20. 5g's cancel out, divide everything by cos 20, and we get mu is equal to tan 20 degrees which is 0 0.36397 dot dot dot, so to three significant figures, 0 0.364. Of course, you could have skipped all of that work if you happen to remember that in this particular situation, a box that is on the point of sliding down a plane with no other forces acting, mu is always equal to tan of the angle of the incline. In this chapter, We've got four things to look at. We're going to calculate the work done by a force, calculate the kinetic and potential energy, know and apply conservation of energy and the work energy principle, and calculate the power developed by an engine. In this video, we're going to focus on the work done by a force. So in mechanics, work is done when a force moves any distance, or perhaps more accurately, when a force moves an object any distance. And if you imagine pushing a box across a floor, there are two elements to how much work you're doing. One is the amount of force you have to use, and the other is how far you have to push. So in its simplest form, work done is equal to force times distance. By the end of the video, we'll change that slightly. But in its simplest form, it's this. The units, quite easy if you think force is newtons and distance is meters, then work done is a newton meter. We don't always call it newton meters, although you will sometimes see it like that. This is also called joules. So one joule is one newton meter. A quick example of this before we continue the notes. A box is pulled 13 meters along a horizontal floor by a horizontal force of magnitude 8 newtons. And 13 meters. Calculate the work done by the force. Very easy. The work done here is equal to the force, 8 times the distance, 13, 104 joules. 
This example has the phrase, the work done by the force. And that's a fairly common phrase to see, work done by the force. But you will also see different phrases like work done against gravity and work done against friction. These are basically the same thing. They're just missing out the by the force phrase in there. So the work done against gravity is the work done by the force against gravity. And the work done against friction is the work done by the force against friction. So obviously against gravity, you're looking at the work done vertically. So we can look at this and get a mini formula just for work done against gravity by itself. So using the equation work done equals force times distance, getting a general statement about the work done against gravity can be done by considering what the force and the distance is in this situation. So in terms of gravity, if you've got some mass here, then the weight of that is mass times g, 9.8 dot, dot, dot. And assuming this is moving upwards at a constant speed, then the force required to overcome that is equal to that mg. So let's say the acceleration here is zero. So this mass is traveling vertically upwards. Then of course we need to know how far has it traveled. Well, we'll just make that a general h, the height the box has moved up. Then the work done is equal to the force, the weight mg, times the distance h. And this will be a common thing for you to see. The work done against gravity is equal to mgh mass times the gravitational constant 9.8 times the vertical distance moved. Quick example of this. A container with total mass 40 kilograms is raised at a constant speed by a vertical cable. Calculate the work done when the container is raised a distance of 9 meters. So here we have our box. It's got a weight of 40 g. It's going to travel up a distance of 9 meters. And the question specifies that it's going at a constant speed. So the force upwards to move this at a constant speed is equal to the weight. So the work done against gravity is equal to 40 g times the 9 meters. And that gives us 3528 joules of work. But as we said in a previous video, because we've used g is 9.8 here, I shouldn't really give an answer better than two significant figures. So let me round that to 3500 joules. Or what you could do is turn it into kilojoules, 3.5 kilojoules of work. Just so that things don't get confusing later, let me compare this with a very similar situation where you still have a 40 g weight and it's still being raised 9 meters. But let's say instead you have a pulling up force, a raising force of 50 g. The work done against gravity in this situation is the same amount, 3.5 kilojoules. That's because you could consider this upwards force as two separate forces, the force against gravity specifically, and then a sort of a remainder force. And that remainder force would be your resultant once you do the 50g minus 40g as part of your F equals ma equation. And that would generate the acceleration that you would expect in this situation. But the work done against gravity is the work done to balance the gravitational downward force. The work done by the lifting force would be a different question. So this phrase, work done against gravity, is very important. It's telling you that you're focused on the gravitational bit. Work done by the lifting force, you would need to do the work done by this entire force, 50g, which of course would give you a bigger answer. So here we have an example of work done against gravity. The next example, involves friction. A packing case is pulled across a horizontal floor by a horizontal rope. And usually I would use F here, but just in case we need to use F equals MA, I'll use P for pulling force. The resistance, obviously in the opposite direction to motion, they've called that R. The case moves at a constant speed, so our F equals MA equation has a zero for the acceleration, p minus r, therefore p must equal to r. When the case has moved a distance of 12 meters, the work done is equal to 96 joules. And we know that the work done is equal to force times distance. So p times 12 is 96, and p is equal to r. 
So r times 12 is equal to 96. 96 divided by 12 is 8 newtons, the magnitude of the resistance. Now you might have been able to cut that down a little bit by just focusing on this number and this number here. This divided by this gets you to the right answer. But I think it's nice to explain why this all works out. Because if you get a more complicated example later, you might need to take this into consideration where P might not be equal to R, there might be something else to consider, like a driving force. But we'll leave that idea to another video. On with the notes. In more complicated situations, the motion might not be in the same direction as the line of action of the force. We can make the equation more specific to allow for this. So instead of work done equals force times distance, it becomes slightly different. But let's have a quick think about a situation where this might apply. If you've got a box, and you're pulling it across the floor, if that box is quite small, it's unlikely that your pull will be horizontal to the floor. It's more likely that you'll be pulling it like this. And that's a bit of a problem, because you can see here the force here is not going to be in the same direction as the motion if this travels along the ground. To calculate the work done, we need to have the two in the same direction. So what we can do here is we can resolve the force in the direction of the motion if we know this angle here. We have f cosine of theta times the distance moved. So we can say that the work done is equal to the component of the force in the direction of motion times the distance moved. Or if you wanted to think about it like this, you could instead say the force times the distance traveled in the direction of the line of action of the force. So instead of doing f cosine theta times distance, you would do distance cosine theta times force. And of course, that will give you the same expression. So you can do either one of these depending on the context of the question. Two examples of this to finish off the video. A sledge is pulled 15 meters across a smooth sheet of ice by a force of magnitude 27 newtons, but the difference here is that the force is inclined at 25 degrees to the horizontal. So the force is there and the box is moving horizontally and this is 25 degrees. By modeling the sledge as a particle, calculate the work done by the force. Quick note here, a smooth sheet of ice gives us no friction, mu is equal to zero. So the only force acting is the 27 newtons. And if we resolve that in this direction, we get 27 cosine 25 degrees. And the distance moved is going to be 15 meters. So the work done is equal to 15 times 27 cosine 25 degrees, which is 367 joules to three significant figures. A quick note on the vertical component. There is, of course, a vertical component of the force, but if there is zero distance being traveled in the vertical direction, then whatever that force is times by zero distance will, of course, give you zero work done. So unless there is a distance traveled in this direction, it doesn't matter that there's a vertical component of the force. Final example. A package of mass 2 kilograms is pulled at a constant speed up a rough plane, which is inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. The coefficient of friction between the package and the surface is 0 0.35. The package is pulled 12 meters upper line of greatest slope of the plane. Calculate the work done against gravity and against friction. So first of all, I'm going to put my weight on here. We've got two kilogram mass, so that's a 2g weight, and immediately resolve it into its components. So here, we've got 2g cosine 30. And if there's no motion perpendicular to the plane, that obviously must equal the normal reaction force here. Then we have the component of the weight down the plane, pulling it down, which is 2g sine of 30 degrees. The pull up the plane, which again I'll call P for the pulling force, just in case I use F somewhere else as the resultant force. Finally, we have the friction, which will also be acting down the plane. I'll call that F subscript R. And we know what that is. F subscript R is equal to mu R. And we know it must be equal to this, not an inequality, because it's the maximum friction, because the package is currently in motion. 
So that equals 0 0.35 times the normal reaction force, which we know is equal to 2g cosine 30, which for now I will leave as 0 0.7g cos 30. Now I'm aware that a lot of this information I don't need for part A but I tend to put it all down so I know what's going on. I've got the full picture there before going on to the questions. So we know pretty much everything. What do we need to actually find? The work done against gravity. So for gravity, we need to know mass times gravity times the height moved. Now this is not the 12 meters up the plane. This is vertical against gravity only. The vertical component of that is here. So in this case, I'm going to resolve the distance to give me the vertical height, which is 12 sine 30 degrees, which is 6 meters. So for part A, the work done against gravity, mgh, 2 times 9.8 times 6, 117.6. And because we've used 9.8, I should round that to two significant figures unless told otherwise. Part B, the work done against friction. Here we come to see the difference in these particular phrases. The work done by the pulling force would be the work done against these two together, but the work done just against friction is just this force. So I was a little bit premature. I didn't really need this. We just need the friction. So for part B, the work done against friction is equal to the friction, 0 0.7 g cosine 30 times by the distance. And in this case, it is the 12 meters being pulled up the plane because this is the direction parallel to the plane where the friction is acting. So we've got 12 there. Stick all of that on my calculator. And that gives me 71.29. But again, I should round that to two significant figures unless told otherwise because I've used g is equal to 9.8. I hope that's enough for you to have a go at the questions in exercise 4a, and maybe I'll see you in the next video.